right, now that we got the shocks rebuilt on this rig, we're going to look into some other things that are going to help the suspension. One thing that I noticed is that these bump stops are four inch bump stops and they're only two inches off of the pad. So basically when the suspension compresses, it goes up two inches, hits the bump stop and he's riding on full bump all the time. In order to utilize the amount of valving changes that we did in the shock, we're going to take these bump stops, go internal, and we're going to put a shim inside here that's going to make these bump stops from four inches to two inches, allowing the suspension to do what it's designed to do. Alright, now that we have the bump stops pulled off the Hitman Kill Shot buggy, I'm going to show you guys how to tear them all the way apart and change the different uh, shaft length. Uh, these particular ones, they measure in at three and a quarter, and we're going to drop them down to two inches. Now, just for time's sake, again, I took the nitrogen off the top of these things. Uh, I like to take these, put them in a vise, hook up my gauge, and then crack the gauge loose and purge the nitrogen out while holding it up in the air. Any oil that comes out will go into this and drop all the way back down into the bump stop. So let's break these things loose. You spin these things off, and you'll notice that at the bottom of this threaded shaft, there's an O-ring. You want to make sure that that O-ring right there doesn't have any burrs in it, there's no material stuck in it, and uh, there's no cuts, just so it'll seal properly. That one looks good. Take the bump stop, pour all the oil into a canister. I kind of like to cycle and get all that stuff out of there. If you look at the end of the shaft, there's a nut, just like on a coilover, and there's shim packs, top and bottom. Pop that nut off, and then I use my 1 8 inch rod to hold everything straight, and I pull everything down through, and then what you'll be left with is just the shim stack on top. So let's do that. Okay. There we go. I'm going to pull everything down to the bottom. Okay, there's the shaft. There's one shim stack. And you can see all that's together. You can reach back down in here and push the rest of it out using this to just keep everything aligned. Okay, there you go. Now, this is what we're gonna be modifying. This is just a piece of steel that they've cut to be the right size. This is one and a half inch outside diameter and it looks like 120 wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of tubing and I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna put it in my lathe over there and I'm gonna cut it to where it's long enough, an inch and a quarter longer. It'll sit on that shaft and limit the amount of travel that this bump stop has. Okay, so what I did was I took a piece of inch and a half 120 wall outside diameter DOM tubing and I cut it to the length that would subtract the distance that I needed to make those bump stops two inches. So what I'm doing now is I'm just truing up the outsides to make it nice and smooth and I'll put it back inside. All right, now that we've went on the lathe and we've taken a piece of inch and a half 120 wall outside diameter tubing and cut it to the correct length to shorten the stroke of this bump stop to two inches. I actually had to go on the inside and lay that on the inside, bore this out about six or seven thousandths to make sure that it slid on the shaft correctly. Let's go back through and show how to put all this stuff back together. So what we're going to do is start off by putting a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads. Then we're going to install the shaft into the housing body. Make sure that your seals on the inside are nice and smooth and you don't have any cuts or tears in it. Now let's get right back inside. Now you're going to take your new shim or your new block and you're going to set it inside. OK. 
Okay. This is where the uh, rod comes in handy. So I've assembled everything on the rod, all the shim packs and the washers and the valving, so that whenever you drop this down inside, it all stays aligned. You can see it's just below the center line. And because of the way you have to put these together, this is probably the easiest way. So I just slide everything down together, all as one unit, kind of slide it back and forth until everything aligns. All right, once you get all the shim stacks aligned properly and put onto the shaft, it's time to install the nut. Put the nut on top of the shaft, thread it down, and use an impact gun to bolt it down. And you don't have to put a lot of pressure on that. It's got a nylon lock nut on top and it's got the blue lock tight. You don't want to put a ton of pressure on it. Just get it snug down so it doesn't move out of the way. Now, you can see that this shock or this bump stop, when it's all the way out, it's got a two inch throw on it. So we've successfully reduced the amount of travel this has down to two inches, which is going to help us out a lot whenever the suspension is trying to cycle. So put your oil back in. All right, and then we're going to put our cap back on. Remember what I said about that O-ring, make sure it's nice and clean. Put your cap back on. Use the spanner wrench to tighten everything back down. And then you're going to charge it back up with nitrogen. Run these about 200 PSI, plus or minus, depending on what your situation is. If you're hitting some big, hard, nasty stuff and you're landing real hard and it's bottoming out, you can go up on the nitrogen. Um, if you find that when it compresses, it throws the suspension down really hard, you can go in and you can actually adjust the valving inside of the rebound so that it'll compress hard, but then rebound slowly. And that should keep you from hitting the face of a rock and bouncing up a little bit. Um, we're going to put these back on the buggy and I'm going to show you what the difference is between the two inch and four inch as far as suspension travel. Okay, so after we got done installing the bump stops on this particular vehicle, we took it out and we did a couple jumps with it and it makes a lot more smooth transition from the coilover shock down to the bump stop. The small bumps that we're hitting are no longer absorbed into the bump stop. You're actually hitting with a coilover, so it's going to help him performance wise to be able to keep the vehicle straight and maintain his, his speed through the whoops and things. If you like the video, Go down in the comments and tell me what you want to see next. Um, hopefully you guys like it.